Hallelujah. It's amazing how without any kind of forewarning or just questioning how the things that's taught a lot of times it's like it's as if we plan together what would be ministered to on today. If you have your word, why don't you turn with me to the book of First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians 14. I had an experience this past week and I felt so strongly like the Lord was saying this is what needs to be talked about right now. Just in a little bit more detail. First Corinthians 14. I bless the Lord for every one of you. Thank you for joining us and sharing with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the ministers, hallelujah. To every one of you kings, queens, sons and daughters, hallelujah. Let's take our proper stance, hallelujah, on behalf of myself and my, my wife, Lady J, beautiful Lady J. We definitely give honor for every one of you all who are in your positions. First Corinthians 14 and verse number 8. I'm going to ask Minister Mwamba if you would grab that microphone and read that one for me. First Corinthians 14 and verse number 8. First Corinthians 14 and 8. For if the trumpet player give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? Hallelujah. Does anybody have a different translation? Does there anybody have a translation that's a little bit different from this one? You got one, Brother Jeff? Let Brother Jeff read and then let Sister Anthony read hers also. Hallelujah. Um, it says, again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for the battle? Hallelujah. And pass it right behind you to Sister Etienne, woman of God. Praise the Lord. And in a war, if the trumpet does not give a clear sound, who will prepare for battle? Hallelujah. For if the trumpet does not give the proper sound, even soldiers won't even be prepared for the battle. Today, y'all, just for a little bit, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fully exhaust this, but I'm gonna just try to give it a go. Sounds for soldiers. Sounds for soldiers. It's amazing that the Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth and he's basically using this particular context to talk about speaking in tongues. The mandate on the power of the Holy Ghost. And he lets us know the importance of not only speaking in tongues, but then also having an interpretation when needed and necessary. I need every one of us to know that there are, there is the gift of speaking in diverse tongues. Diverse tongues is literally languages that can be found around the world with various peoples, various nations, they can speak in that particular language and someone can have a general conversation. I can remember years ago when we were at our build, at the building that we leased out or we were renting on the north side and I can remember standing up in Bible study and this was a very peculiar season. I can remember a young lady walked into our building. And it was like halfway through the service. And I was already up teaching. 
And when she walked in, there was a different feeling that came into the building. And it was so uncomfortable, if you would, that I went from speaking and understanding, speaking the word of God. I shifted and started speaking in nothing but tongues. Because I didn't understand what was going on. The scripture says that men don't even know how to pray as he ought to. But the spirit would pray through us with utterance that's too deep for human understanding a lot of times. So, so when this person, when this female came into the building, I began to pray in tongues. And after about maybe, I don't know, two, three minutes or so, I felt like I was released to go back to speaking and understanding and I began to finish teaching. And as soon as I finished teaching, I wanted to know who was this young lady that just walked into our building and there was something about her, Brother Edmund, that she just, something wasn't, it just, it just wasn't a peaceful feeling I felt about her. So before I allowed anybody at the church to go up to and greet her, I wanted to go greet her first. And when I went to greet her, I noticed that when she sat in her chair, she never turned around. She never looked. It's like she sat and her, her eyes was looking straight like a zombie. I mean, it was something very peculiar about her presence. So when I went over to go speak to her, I said, how are you? And when she was speaking, she never even looked at me in my eyes. And the one thing that was peculiar, she said, without looking at me in my eyes, me, she said, are you from Ethiopia? I said, no. I said, are you from Ethiopia? She said, my mother is. She said, and I heard some of the things you were speaking. I said, did I sign? I didn't know I was just speaking as I was led. And this woman tells me that she understood some of the things that I was saying being led of the Spirit. I'm saying that to say, y'all, that in this day and time, Right now, 2023, there will be people that will try to make you believe that the power of the Holy Ghost is no longer valid. They will try to make you believe that speaking in tongues is not for a day and time such as this. But I need to actually give fair warning to let you know that the scripture says in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the power of the Holy Ghost is just as much needed right now as it was in the day of Acts. I need every one of us to know that the giftings and the callings of God that he has given unto us is without repentance. And you better believe that there's some battles you will fight, that the only way you will be quick and the only way you will be able to take your stance is if the Lord himself gives you the utterance that you might speak that will save your life. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Lord, save my life. The scripture says that the trumpet gives an uncertain sound. Don't y'all know that they talk about that there is sounds? Right, let me just go, go to a place real quick. Y'all know that there's certain vibrations that can cause sand to create different patterns in sand? Do you know that there's different sounds that can cause different types of ripples and patterns in water? What would make you think that your sound is not needed for where you go? There is a sound that the Lord himself has given every one of us to the degree, Brother Edmund, that he says, my sheep know my sound. And the voice of the stranger, they will not follow. Everybody say, I have a unique sound. I have a unique sound. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, even a soldier won't even prepare for battle. Back up real quick, because we gotta we gotta deal with this real quick because I, I need you to understand that we're in a position where we need the Holy Ghost, we need the Spirit of the Lord more now than ever before. If you would, go to Romans, the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Romans 8. I'm sorry, Romans 7. Romans 7. 
And let's go to verse number 22. Praise the Lord. Brother Darian, man, I'm so glad that you made it, man. I just wish you had a little bit more time to be here, but we'll get you, we'll get you next time. Brother Bosco, you know that boy Hooper back there, man. That's praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 7. And look at verse number 22. Minister T, won't you go ahead and read that 22, man? Romans 7, verse 22. Yes, sir. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Oh, wait a minute. If, if, if I'm taking delight in the Lord, it's not my flesh. Yeah. Say after my spirit, my inward. Everybody say my inward man. My inward man. I'm loving what I'm feeling. I have a greater desire to know what he means when he speaks to me. I know he says I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but what does that really mean? Like, like, like tell me more. Hallelujah. Enlighten me, Father. He says I delight in the law of God of the inward man, but it don't stop right there. Verse number 23. But I see another law in my members and it's warring against the law of my mind and it's bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. What keeps us from getting freedom Brother Jeffrey what keeps us from walking in freedom and keeps us from graduating is this other law. It's this, this sinful nature. And the scripture says it's, it's, it's at war with me. So my inward man, star, is understanding what it means to seek after God. But then in my flesh, it still got certain things that I still want to do. Certain things I still like. Can anybody be honest enough to say that you got some stuff that your flesh kind of would like to want to do? Thank you, baby. Y'all, let me tell you something. They got some things in our flesh, man, that if we don't check it, how do you know, how do you know when you graduate? It's not just when you stop doing certain things. It actually starts when you start having the desire to stop. Yeah. See, because the desire has to graduate to an action. You can say, I don't want to drink, and then keep finding yourself drinking again. You can say, I don't want to have sex, but dang, here I go again. I'm on my back again. But when, with the desire, and I'm sorry, y'all, but we just got to be clear. But when the desire comes to a place when I say, I can't, I won't, I choose to stop. That's graduation, that's progress, that's, that's movement. See, I see this law, everybody say, I see this law in my members. And it's warring against the law of my mind, challenging the gatekeeper, hallelujah. Trying to fight to see what gets access into the storage tank. It's fighting my mind. Let me in. You know you still want me. Here I come banging on the door. Let me in. You, 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 you know you can't stop. We've been doing this for 20 years. Let me in. And it's fighting my mind is trying to say, I can't do this no more. No, 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 I, no, no, I, I, I need to stop this. It's a war going on. And if I give in to this war, it brings me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my flesh. It's almost like when you give in, I want y'all, I just, I, I, sometimes I try to be a little graphic. I want y'all know how y'all used to hear those scary movies and you, you hear about demonic activity or, or you hear somebody going to prison and y'all can just imagine the sound of chains dragging on the ground when you got people in prison and you just hear the chains because there's no free movement. You just, you get limited in what you can do. And what happens is every time Every time we go into captivity of sin and death, 
I want y'all to think of them chains. Think of that sound. Because now it's like you're being forced to do what you really know you shouldn't be doing anymore. But it's in my flesh. And man, look what Paul says right here in verse number 24. Praise the Lord. Sister Nisa, why don't you read that one for me? Verse number 24. Look at how Paul deals with it without any, any shame. Go ahead, Sister Nisa. Romans 7. 6. Romans 6. Ver Romans 7 and 24. 7 and 24. Romans 7 and 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from his body of death? Y'all see that? It says, oh, wretched man. I don't know about y'all, but I've been wretched before. I'm talking about can't control where I want to go. Find myself somewhere else. Find myself somewhere else. Oh, wretched man that I am. He says, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I want y'all to understand, except the Lord himself steps in, we're doomed. We're bound. Except the Lord intervenes. Is there anybody that a, your course of direction changed because of a word from the Lord? Yeah. Everybody say, I'm being delivered even right now. Oh my God. So now, when it says, Oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? I switch over right now to Romans 8 and 1. See, we can quote this scripture pretty quick, but it's almost as if we have one half of it, but we lose the other half. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Here's the part. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When we come into Christ, we enclosed, surrounded by Christ. That means that we develop the discipline to say, flesh, we got to break up. I can't respond to you the way I used to. I can't listen to you. I look at the position that you put me in. I look at the, the times I fell. I look at the things that you've done and the bondage that came as a result. I don't want that anymore. Scripture says in verse number two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. The Lord sets me free. The Lord sets me free. Come on, y'all. We, we, we need to know what freedom is. It's way more than just hearing words. Everybody say, the Lord sets me free. The Lord sets me free. Hallelujah. I choose to believe. I choose to be led of His Spirit. The Lord sets me free. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. That Word became flesh. So this Word has set me free from the law of sin and death. Verse number three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. The word alone shows us who the bully is. The word will show you who the bully is. The word will show you who you're fighting. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We can know it. But just knowing it alone sometimes brings more torment. Wait a minute. That's the one that's been bullying me. He's the one popped me on the back of my head. But now the word is like, he way bigger than me. He come. Hey. And now the word has made it known to where I know what my adversary is. I know where they're coming from. But just the word alone is not good enough. 
you need something else now. Watch this. For what the law could not do, because it was weak to the fruit of flesh. But then God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So now the Lord shows up. Say what bully? What he been? Hallelujah. He said, Hold up, my disciples, y'all been seeing the bullets, y'all been running? Come with me. And the Lord goes to all of the bullets. And the bullets look at the Lord and say, please don't cast us out. Please, please let us go into swine. Please, please don't do this. He says, blind eyes, come open. Oh, dead man, come back to life. What, what, what the law couldn't do, we had the word. See, most people, you wonder why we go to church for so many years. And there's no change. It's because we got everybody. See, we got the word. We got the word. What's missing then? The spirit. The power. He says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive what, y'all? Power. Hallelujah. Wonder why we can go to church and feel like nobody's graduating, feel like nobody's getting strong. How can you receive power and not exercise that authority? They say, who is this? See, Jesus came here to understand, y'all. He showed up speaking a word just like the scribes, just like the Pharisees and the Sacks. He was speaking the same thing. That wasn't it. But what was it they said? How can he speak with such authority? Hallelujah. Even the apostles he walked with, they said, I know he's a man. I mean, come on, y'all, you know how it is when we hanging out with, with your partners when you're young and you got to use the bathroom when you're a boy, you expect boys, all boys, they go stand up somewhere. And your friends, they over there, they all, we, we know he's a man. But what manner of man is he? And even the wind and the waves obey him. And the Lord tells us, Behold, I give you power. See, Jesus, Yeshua himself had to say, Those who was following me, he's telling the apostles, Man, I know they got a lot of them out there preaching. Y'all got to be different. Y'all got to be different. He says, I got to give you something. Can't be no confusing whether or not you at this church or that church. Now nah, you got to be connected to the true and the living God. Yes, Send them out two by two. Yes, sir. I can't come with y'all boys on this one. You need to exercise it. You need to practice it. Now nah, you got to go to church. It's not about going to church right now. Go to work. Wait, go to work. Yes, sir. You gotta go to get some bread now. I can't go with you right now. He said, go to Walmart. But remember what I told you. Hallelujah. Remember what you've been given. Go wherever you go. What school you at? Would you think I'm surprised that y'all start doing a Bible study at UHV? I'm not surprised. I would be surprised if you had the word and you didn't do it. See, it's not about just having a word. You gotta have his spirit oh, on the inside. Everybody say his spirit is in me. His spirit is in me. Y'all, we, we gotta say this, y'all. How does faith come, y'all? By hearing the word. By hearing. Hearing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But what the law, what the word, y'all, listen to this, what the word could not do, it was weak through the flesh. It's almost like me telling somebody, man, go. I got a house. Go buy a house. And you like, but I don't know how. I don't know what to do. The spirit is like saying, give me your hand. Let me go through this with you. That's why it says you need the comforter. Everybody say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. If you're not alone, where is he? 
But you know that's why the scripture says lay hands on no people suddenly. Because there's things that can transfer to one another. The scripture says that Jesus himself, he was able, y'all can y'all imagine a child couldn't speak and couldn't hear. A child couldn't speak and couldn't hear. We can say, oh, they were born like that. And the Lord says, I bind this dumb spirit. A deaf spirit come out of him. Yes, sir. And then he also says, there's some attacks in human body that's not by way of a demonic attack. But the disciples said, who sinned? Did his mother, his father? He said, nah, this one right here was set here just for the glory of God to be made known. So, so there are, there is such things as sickness and infirmity that's just in the realm of the flesh. But then there's some levels of sickness and infirmity that's a spiritual bondage. But the word is life and spirit. You can receive a word of knowledge, word of wisdom. You can receive a prophetic word and regardless of whatever it is, it still must obey to bring about freedom for the children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 14. Go down to verse number, go to, go to verse number 10. Go back to 1 Corinthians 14. Because there's a sound that quickens soldiers. There's a sound that quickens soldiers, makes soldiers come to life. 1 Corinthians 14 and 10. Look what this word says. King Sam, why don't you read that one for me? 1 Corinthians 14 and verse number 10. Hallelujah. There are many different languages in the world. Hallelujah. And every language has meaning. Hallelujah. Listen to this, y'all. There are so many different languages in the world. And every one of those languages means something. See, you got to understand why am I saying this? Because they got people that act like speaking in tongues doesn't mean anything. And the Lord says, you have any idea how many languages they have in the world? People understand all those languages. They have significance. So if those languages in the world make a difference, Sister Etienne, how much more languages from the Spirit? How much more, like the Scripture says, I think it's in 1 Corinthians 13, the tongues of angels. Hallelujah. He said there's so many languages, so many different voices in the world, and none of them is without significance. I'm not talking about somebody that teach you how to speak in tongues and they say, say peanut butter chocolate real fast. I'm not talking about that. Peanut butter chocolate, peanut butter chocolate. And they say, they got people that used to do stuff like that, try to make, but if you're born of the spirit, there is an utterance therein that the Lord himself will give unto you. And this voice, this sound has extreme significance for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can remember so many years ago, out on the north side, on cross timbers of Yale, and I can still remember this guy getting into a fight at a gas, uh, at a car wash. I still remember. There's certain things that's just etched into me now. And when the fight was going on, we was getting ready, me and one of my partners was getting ready to put gas in the generator because the power was out in the building and we were like, man, we're going to still have service. And he was like, man, man, deep, bro, I got a generator. We're going to go, I'm going to get the generator so we can still have service. Like, well, you know, when you start getting mature in the things of God, just know anything stop, interrupts your fellowship. If your fellowship is interrupted behind anything, you know, it's almost like saying that also shows the level of discipline and maturity. It shows how much you graduated. They got some people that if it look like it's raining outside, they won't have fellowship. They won't go to church. 
church and won't connect. But here it is, the power was out in the building. My brother said, man, I got a generator. So we go to get gas and put it in the generator. And as we put gas in it, Mr. T, a fight breaks out across the street. And I'm standing, y'all know how, y'all know how, how black people do in a fight take place. You know, y'all remember being in high school and a fight take place. Everybody run, run, see the fight. So we at the gas station and we, everybody, the whole everybody filling up the gas. They all stop and they're like, everybody, we all looking. And while I'm looking, and I'm praying as I'm watching them and I'm saying Father is there something you want me to do is there something you need me to do right now and it was like the Lord never spoke back to me he never said anything so I'm praying and next thing you know I'm like okay the fight stopped my Bible was like safety I'm about to go give me a drink real quick I said, all right, and I'm standing out there, and I saw the dude that was fighting. He started coming over to the gas station, coming over where we were, Brother Edwin. And when he came over, my partner was coming out of the gas station from getting a drink, like a Coke, a fountain drink or something like that. And as he passed him up, saying, their feet just, the side of their feet just kicked, like the side of their feet scraped each other. And the dude looked at my partner and said, say, homie, you hit my foot. And my partner just ignored him. You know, but trying to be strong in the spirit, you know. And he didn't worry about it. The dude said, say, bro, did you hear what I said? And my partner turned around and said, what you talking to me? He said, man, I told you, you hit my foot. You need to apologize right now. And my partner was like, hey, you probably drunk. Go ahead on about your business, you know. You ain't trying to do that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he's saying to himself, man, I'm with my boy. We about to go bring this generator to the church. We ain't worried about that. And all of a sudden, the dude started cussing my partner out. And my partner was like, he turned around and he said, what? And my partner started cussing him back. Y'all know how it is. Y'all some of us, we try to say, we're not going to cuss no more. And, and then you get pushed, like for real. And you realize you still got some of the cuss words that you get. They deep down there, you know. My partner started cussing back at him, and when he started cussing back, I said, wait a minute. I started walking over there to go where they were, and my partner was like, nah, D, let me handle this. I got this, like, this is street, you're not street no more. I got this. And I'm speaking in tongues, and I'm like, okay. And I'm waiting to see if it's just going to mellow over. But it didn't, he said. It got worse. And all of a sudden, they went from being 20 feet apart to 10 feet apart. Next thing you know, the dude is talking about putting his hands on my partner. They talking about fighting. Dude said he was telling my partner he'd kill him. My partner was like, you ain't going to do it. I mean, they, they going back and forth. And at this point, I remember he told me stop. But the next time, I realized I couldn't wait for him. I couldn't. So what I did was, I said, if I just watch this happen, y'all, I'm still kind of from the street a little bit. So it's like, when I saw them get close, I'm like, I didn't want them to start scrapping. Right there. And the dude was bigger than me and my partner. And I'm smaller than my partner. And I'm like, if he get the best of them, I can't just act like I'm not going to do anything. So I'm like, I got to get in this. And would you believe, when they got to the points committee, when they got to the point to where they probably was about, probably about this far apart, and they cussing each other, they hand gestures and, and they constantly coming close to the floor, I'm like, something about to happen. I'm speaking in tongues, and I just came right in front of them, and I got up, and the dude told me, and I'm looking up at him, but I'm not flinching, and I'm speaking in tongues. And the dude, as the dude is looking at my partner, he's still cussing my partner. And as his eyes come down and saw me, y'all, God is my witness. I wasn't speaking in understanding, I was speaking in tongues. The dude, when he realized I was there, the dude grabbed my hand and got down on his knees. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about you, I promise. I'm not talking about you, please, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not talking about you, I'm sorry. He started begging for me to believe that he wasn't talking to me. 
And my partner was like, if you don't know about you and that friend, like, and he going off. And the dude, from the time he saw my eyes, he just kept looking down. And I said, he holding my hand. And I'm like, man, why are you getting out on your knees like that? And he, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I said, do you know me? He said, I promise I knew you. I knew you, I know you. I said, what do you know me from? He took his finger and pointed toward the sky at today. And he said, I know you from around here. I'm sorry, I promise I'm not talking to you. And once he said that, I said, man, get up off your feet. I said, man, go ahead on about your business. It's all good. It didn't happen one time, y'all. After I told him to go on, I turned around and went back toward the truck. And when he turned and met eyes with my partner again, he went right back to talk about killing my partner all over again. The second time, I ran over there, I'm saying, Lord, some y'all, faith will make you take risks. And I'm not trying to get anybody to be ignorant. I'm just telling you what happened with me. I went right back to him again the second time. Procura, I tell you, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in tongues. The second time he got down on his knees again. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about you. And now, at the same time, God is teaching you. They got some grounds when you take your position as a man of God, you can't leave. You got to wait till they leave. Three times, I had to go back. The last time I went back, I said, man, go ahead on about your business. And I stood there until he left from the gas station. And I'm like, man, he never had nothing like this happen to me before. We didn't put the gas in the generator and we headed back to the church. I'm driving. I'm like, oh, this is still working for this. Oh, God, it's in the morning. It didn't tell me nothing. Yes, sir. There have been times I used to think I was nothing. There was times I didn't know who I was. Yes, sir. And have somebody all of a sudden to get down on their knees before me. But it wasn't me, it was the Lord inside of me. Guess what? As we drive out, I'm like, ooh, ooh, what is it? And my partner looking out the window. And I looked at him and I said, Sid, you all right? You all right? And I noticed he was kind of down. He said, man, I'm not right. I said, what you mean? He said, man, D, I'm not right. I said, what you mean? He said, but that was a spirit inside that dude. He said, that spirit knew who you were. He respected you. He said, but he didn't respect me. He said, because I'm not right. I need y'all to understand, this is not a game. Yo, there should be no reason where if you, I'm not just talking about going to a local assembly, but if you're actually going to church and you're in the presence of God, I'm talking about in the presence of God. The scripture said when Moses came down from the mountain, there was a glory over him. That means some challenges come not to cause you to fear, but for you to know do you really know who you are. Bring princess back. <laughs> Y'all come back here. Praise the Lord. It's so very important for us to know who we are. Why am I saying this, y'all? Because there's so many different sounds around the world and all of these sounds have extreme significance. The sound of the Spirit ignites the life of the Spirit. Then there's languages that raise leaders. Languages that causes leaders to arise. And what kind of word did them boys have, Bosco, when the Lord said, 
you go into that city. Y'all two go to that city. Y'all two go to that city. What kind of word was it that, that they saw it happen so much and then it's like the Lord was like, now you need to believe it's going to happen for you. Yes, you need to believe that you have the power. You have to believe that you have the authority. Almost like saying, like I almost wanted in my own little slang way, like, like, man, as y'all leave it, remember you ain't no pawn. Remember you still hung in the Lord. I don't care how fine she is, you ain't got to fall. You can line up as they halfway down the block. Don't forget who you are. Believe. Can you imagine? When they was on their way back, Lisa, they was just like me sitting in my truck, like, whoa, 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 whoa. it's real, but you got to get to a place that you start realizing that the word alone is not enough for all I need your spirit. That word can cause me sometimes to increase in fear from a standpoint of what the word could not do through the flesh. That's why it says, wait until you get power. See, once you know who your enemy is, then you know how to fight these enemies. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Verse number 16, First Corinthians 14 and 16. When it came down, comes down to speaking in tongues. Let me just let me just read this whole thing right quick. Watch this, y'all. Verse number 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. Do y'all see that? My understanding is unfruitful. Verse number 15. What is it then? Like if I know I need, I need to pray in the spirit, but sometimes I don't know what I'm saying in the spirit. He says, so what am I going to do? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. Everybody say, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in the spirit. Come on, everybody say, everybody say, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in the spirit. Everybody say, I will pray in the understanding. I will pray in the understanding. He said, I will sing in the spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. Verse number 16. Or else, when you bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned be able to say amen? Praise the Lord. No, the scripture says I can actually bless somebody in the spirit. What do you mean bless them in the spirit? I can literally be speaking in tongues and believing that God is doing for you and for me what's necessary at that moment. But because our understanding is unfruitful, the scripture says what well, a person might be sitting there like this and like, man, what they say? He said, how can you say, and it is so, or I agree? He said, how do you be able to say amen and give thanks? Seeing that they don't understand what you're saying. Verse 17. For thou verily give thanks, you can give thanks well, but the other is not edified because they gotta be understanding. That's why prophecy and speaking in tongues has to always be together. Verse number 18. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than all of y'all. Y'all see that? Everybody say, I will speak with tongues. I will speak with tongues. Hallelujah. He I speak with tongues more than all of you. Praise the Lord. Verse number 19. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Y'all see that? So that means we're in the building, and if we're praying, and if we have a microphone, if we're in a place where the people around may not understand what's going on, I'm not saying not to pray in tongues, but you don't necessarily have to pray in tongues in a microphone. You speak it knowing. See, see, the 
the power is not in the microphone. The power is in the spirit. Everybody say the power is in the spirit. Power is in the spirit. But then as God gives revelation, as God gives prophecy, as God leads you to pray, because by praying in the tongue, sometimes he realigns and shows you what you need to pray also by way of the understanding. So now, I'm making sure that I'm not even giving nobody a chance to be offended. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? This is powerful, y'all. And it goes back and forward. He said, verse number 20, brethren, don't be children in understanding. Like, don't get to the point to where you like a, a child with understanding. You got to mature to this level. He says, how be it in malice when it comes down to doing ungodly stuff? Oh yeah, be children with that. But in understanding, be men. Hallelujah. Amen. Then there's words, y'all, that deploy warriors. Words that deploy warriors. I'm going to just read through these myself. John 16. Watch this. John 16, verse number 7. Watch this. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is, it is expedient for you that I go away. For I, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Verse number 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Meaning, there will never be a time that he's not addressing sin. What's the job of the Holy Ghost? To show you where sin is. Like you wonder why this ain't happening for you? The Holy Spirit is like, tell him this is the reason why you still come out of this. You need to stop doing it. Reprove the world of sin and of righteousness. So now I got to show you, oh, that's sin. But man, this right here, man, that's righteousness. Man, keep on doing that. Man, do that some more. Man, get your partner. Do that also with other people. This is right. But this over here, man, you need to chill with that. That's sin. But then it also says, and of judgment. Judgment means, man, I told you about this before. If you don't stop, this is what's going to happen. Man, I pray that Father opens your heart. I pray that you can change. But man, if not, this is the judgment that will happen. That's what the Holy Ghost will do. Verse number nine. Look how he takes a sentence for each judgment of sin. He said, the reason why you're walking in sin, because they don't believe on me. Y'all see that? Because they believe not on me. Verse number 10. Of righteousness, because I'm going to my father. And you're not going to see me. So now you need to know how to continue to walk in righteousness, even though those familiar people are not around you anymore. Even though you're not around the Vikings, you still call to be that Viking. Even though the war is not around you at that time, my spirit remains in you. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is already judged. I have yet many things to say unto you. But you can't even bear it right now. You can't, you won't even understand this. Verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. You understand how I feel y'all over again. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things that are coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How important is it for us to have the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. It's so very important for us to know who we are. It's so very important for us to know who we are. Hallelujah. And we had, when he had so said, after he came back from being resurrected, he walked into the room 
and said peace unto you. And when he so said, after he said peace, he said, just in case y'all don't know who I am, scripture says he said peace, and he starts sticking out his hands for me. Yeah, I was the one that was crucified. Sometimes y'all got some stuff that happens to us that's embarrassing. And the Lord says, this is part of the graduation. You don't have to hide it under your coat. Yeah, I was living like this. This is what killed me. I chose to give it up. And I love the fact that he didn't just say he showed his hands. Scripture said he pulled back the robe and showed that he stabbed the death blow. How are you standing here? How are you here? Because the same spirit that resurrected Christ from the grave shall resurrect our mortal bodies. He showed his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw it. And Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, now I'm sending you. And the scripture says he got close to him. And he said, receive the Holy Ghost. Y'all, if you're if you wondering, if you're questioning, if you've never been sure, I need you to really know and understand the Holy Ghost is real. Y'all, the world is going to make a mockery of everything that's associated with the kingdom. But that's not for us. Receive the power. Receive the strength. Where, where is the graduation? It's in the power. Where is the anointing? Where is the fulfillment? Where is the deliverance? It's in the word and the spirit. Father, we lift up our hands before you right now, Lord God. We ask that you lead us. Some of us have been struggling, Lord God, fighting with certain sins, Lord God, fighting with certain mindsets. Some of us, Lord God, are still just dealing with things like wondering, why am I still dealing with this? Your word says, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. All in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 